Hey guys, welcome back to News to the Sunish, and today we're going to be talking about that new Pokemon Direct that came out on the 9th yesterday to be exact. Uh, talking about what other new things that Game Freak is going to be presenting in the Pokemon world. A lot of us speculated a new Pokemon game. While, in fact, we are not getting a new Pokemon game, we are getting, for the first time ever, DLC expansion packs for the existing current Pokemon Generation games. And that is for Pokemon Sword and Shield. And I didn't see this coming from Game Freak, especially. And Game Freak and Nintendo is not well known for making DLC expansion packs for games such as Pokemon. It's always been like the traditional conventional three game releases, whereas the first initial two releases of Pokemon games, to give you an example, Black and White and uh, Pearl and Diamond and um, even Ruby and Sapphire, a third initial game would come out like Emerald and um, uh, Crystal and, and whatnot. So those games would come out and ultimately give you the full definitive version of those games. And it would include, you know, special features and different Pokemon that weren't available in the initial two releases. But this one, Pokemon uh, Game Freak has decided to capitalize on that and take advantage of it by releasing expansion packs that are paid. And let me tell you, um, based on what I saw from the Direct, I can't really determine whether it's worth it or not. I wouldn't say that making these expansion packs are... You know, be, uh, making these expansion packs being paid is the best option. Um, if anything, I would at least price it at least maybe, maybe at most, half the price that they're going for, if not at least nothing. Well, and I can give you a few reasons. Now, if we turn to our attention to this Pokemon Direct here, where it says that Pokemon Sword and Shield is releasing an expansion pack. Part 1 will be releasing called The Owl of Armor, coming to the end of June. 2020 and the crown of tundra coming uh autumn 2020 so these expansion pants will be released and you can actually um pre-purchase them at to start right away so you can have them ready to go and they can automatically download to your nintendo switch um so let's talk about these expansion packs the first thing that i really want to touch upon and um, excuse me i'm scrolling through the uh screen here uh hold on a second the first thing i want to touch upon is something that should have been addressed from the beginning and the initial release of these games. And it's it's the one thing that sparked a lot of controversy regarding, you know, Pokemon availability, the national decks to be exact, is the fact that we're getting 200 plus Pokemon available when these expansion packs come out. Now, this goes back into like the arguments that Nick Game Freak had made regarding um, Pokemon. Um, and regarding the, regarding the national decks as to why the availability of Pokemon was so limited, whereas the other games from the Nintendo 3DS and Game Boy Advance and Game Boy, and Game Boy Color, they were all available. I mean, they granted, they weren't all available in either games. You would have to trade between games or send them to the Pokemon Bank to get the Pokemon you really wanted. But nonetheless, it was still available in the decks, and you could trade it over and have that Pokemon in the game. As to why Pokemon Sword and Shield didn't have all the Pokemon to start off with is inexcusable. Granted, the fact that these games are of better quality, not much, but I would say it's upscale. It's not exactly a beautiful game, but it is a pretty lush game, and I think more... like. I think more time overall, like more time would would have been necessary to make this game, and I would have I wouldn't have minded if I had to wait longer for these games to be made and completed. But in fact, we fe it feels like that we've been lied to and fooled because we essentially got a very incomplete game. We've only got about four hundred and fifty or four hundred and thirty so Pokemon available in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and right now we're already treading at a little over a thousand Pokemon as far as the national decks goes. So there's already well over a thousand Pokemon available and we're only getting not even like we're only getting about a quarter of that in these games. And now with the upcoming expansion passes, this includes 200 plus brand new Pokemon that will be available, making the game so far in its entirety to have at least 600 plus Pokemon officially available out of the thousand that should have been available. Now, is this an improvement? Yes. Do, should we have paid for this? No, I completely disagree with it. And let's go back into like the argument that Game Freak made regarding the uh, Pokemon availability and as to why, you know, 
as to what excuse that they had to present to us as to why they couldn't have all the Pokemon available in the national decks. Game Freak Pokemon Controversy. Um, I, I don't remember where the article is, but if I Google this, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, um, like the first thing will pop up. I mean, Pokemon Sword Shield Pokedex expansion should silence critics. Uh, I heavily disagree with that screen rant. Um, will make you hate uh, the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC will make you hate Game Freak even more. See, that's another topic. Um, in a way, yes, um, I think I would hate Game Freak a little bit because I feel like I've been slapped in the face. Uh, why should we charge for this? If anything, this should be a, w a means of apologizing. I remember Pokemon Game Freak initially said that they had no plans in bringing more Pokemon available to these games and that they were going to go ahead and pursue this method. And as far as making certain limited Pokemon available, that was going to be the conventional way moving forward in, in future Pokemon games. And it turns out they did lied because they released this expansion pass on us and they say, you know what, we're going to add 200 plus more Pokemon. When they initially released these games, stating that they're not going to be releasing, uh, making all the Pokemon available in the national decks available. It's, it's absurd, really. So look at the, let's look at this article coming from Polygon. And it says here, earlier Wednesday morning, a video game hashtag climbed to the top spot across America. Game Freak lied. Hashtag Game Freak lied. And this announcement of, from the Pokemon Direct is stirring up a little bit of controversy. It's always controversy with Game Freak. They mess up from the beginning. They lie to us. And now they're giving us this expansion pass. Granted, also another thing i got to explain to you. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield expansion pass, the Alum Armor and the Crown of Tundra. Whether you have Sword or Shield and you get the expansion passes, they're actually going to be different. And I'll tell you why. Because let's start off with, uh, I'm going to scroll off over here. Uh, I don't want to play videos because I don't, I don't want to get like hit with copyright. But to keep it simple, certain characters are available whether you have Sword and Shield. So, for example, um, oh, and a, a, a cool thing that I do like about this expansion pass, and I am going to buy it regardless, despite, like, how spiteful this may come across, um, they are going to bring back a lot of the original uh, Johto, Hoenn, and um, Kanto Pokemon into these games, and they're going to bring Galarian forms to all the legendaries. And, yes, all the legendaries will become available when these expansion passes come out. And there's even a new Galarian form of Slowpoke that you see right here that's going to be available, which is really interesting because he's going to have like a dark form when he evolves into like Slowbro or uh, Slow King. And I want to see that. I definitely want to see that. Um, but it's available to pre-order shortly after this presentation. So right now you can actually pre-order the Isle of Armor and Crown of Tundra. But there was something here where like you meet rivals. Um... And um, whether you have Sword and Shield, you'll have a different rival. And I think one of them, I, I can't remember, where is it? There it is. Okay, so this is the Psychic type rival, and the other one I think is like a Ghost type or Fighting type rival or Shadow Fighting type. And there are two new Legendaries, plus there's going to be new Dynamax forms for the uh, starters that you get in the game. Because the starters don't have a final... final um, they don't have a Dynamax form when you initially, you know, got these starters. They just turn big and that's it. Um, right here, these are the legendaries. Of, uh, these are the Pokemon that you get and that and they evolve. Plus, they are one of them is a Fighting Dark type, the other one's a Fighting Water type. Interesting um, types, dual types, and I'm pretty excited for that. I'm more or less excited to get this. Now, these are the same exact Pokemon. Like their names, are, the, the despite the looks of this, they have the same name. And whether you have Sword and Shield, I think you you can either get this one or the other one. Um, I can't remember the name. What's the name? Oh, here's the name. Uh, yeah, it's called Ur Urshifu. So these are the Gigantamax forms that you get that you see in the trailer. They they showed a little bit of that in like an in an animation form, and then these are the Dynamax forms that you get with these uh, Pokemon, and they evolve from. Um, hold on, let me see if I can find it. Here. They evolve from this Pokemon right here. It's pretty adorable. Kubfu. So you get this Pokemon when you get this expansion pack, and then you have the chance to evolve it, and it turns it evolves into Urshifu, and it'll evolve into either one of these two distinctive styles. So that's a pretty cool feature. 
Um, overall, I think it, it looks like a lot is being added to it, but I don't think it really warrants the pricing of twenty nine ninety nine. And that, like, remember twenty ninety nine. That's like a, the price of a Nintendo DS games, and they're both different depending on which game you get. So the expansion pass can be different for Pokemon Sword, and the expansion pass can have different things for Pokemon Shield. So they're going to be priced at thirty dollars each. So if you have Pokemon Sword, you need to buy the right expansion pack. If not, you'll end up buying the wrong one and you're not going to be able to play with it unless you get Shield. So either if you have Pokemon Sword and Shield, you need to buy the expansion pass for one of them and they're both priced at $30. $60 value right there. It sounds like the price of a third Pokemon game. And it it probably, like if you really think about it, if they're going to charge for this, they should have made a flat out new Pokemon version game with the expansion pass included. Because if I have to dish out $60 to play a new Pokemon game, because I have the dual pack, I would have to dish out $60 to initially play more content, uh, like expandable content in these Pokemon games. And that's uh, that's absurd. Now, I would have been okay if the price was like $14.99 or $10.99 or even $9.99. But I don't think this expansion pass warrants the price for a few reasons. One... All these Pokemon that were missing and Game Freak claimed that they were not going to add Pokemon are now being added to these games. That's number one. Number two, the previous Pokemon games had all the Pokemon available in the national decks. So whether you couldn't catch certain species of Pokemon in one version or the other, you were still able to transfer them or trade them or even catch them if you bought both versions of the game. And that's ridiculous. And with these games, you're only getting about a quarter of the Pokemon available and nothing else is available. Regardless if you have them available from like Pokemon Bank, if that Pokemon is not available in the National Dex, uh, uh, in the Pokedex, in the Galar Galarian Dex, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, you can't transfer them over, uh, over to that game regardless if you have them or not. So um, I don't think $30 is warranted really. Um, I think it should have been included. I think it should have been free. It would have been a form of being apologetic, honestly, to uh, the fans, to the people, to the fans that really devoted their time and energy and money to these games for the last 20 plus years or to even the new fans. And I'm sorry if I um, uh, got one off in tangent there, but and I went off on a rant, but I really it really has this has really frustrated me. Honestly, I'm a Pokemon fan. I love playing these games. Um, I'm not a hardcore fan, but I love playing them. I've loved playing them for the last 20 years. And it's actually surprising and a shock. And I'm just going through a whole flood of emotions right now because I'm surprised. I'm happy that we're getting expansions, but I'm a little upset too because we're, we have to dish out more money to essentially make the game that more complete. Um, the game is already initially, like when it first came out, it was already initially incomplete. So why do we have to pay more money? We already paid $60 for what we thought should have been a full game just to add more content to it. So essentially you're spending $90 on a game that's not even completed, that doesn't have all the Pokemon in the world, that graphically speaking, isn't really overall that impressive. It has reused animations and it's just absurd. So back at this article real quick, Game Freak Lied, hashtag Game Freak Lied, a caustic repository for all anxiety, angst, and anger that has defined the pre-release narrative of Pokemon Sword and Shield. First glance, the fur is a refute against Game Freak's development decision for Pokemon Sword and Shield. But if we take a step back, the issue is much bigger than pocket monsters. The hashtag Game Freak Lied hashtag appears to be the brainchild of Reddit who shared images of Pokemon wireframes, which report, purported to show reused assets in Sword and Shield. So like I mentioned before, a lot of the assets were reused from previous games. As the post tells, Game Freak said it decided to cut the National Pokedex thereby limiting the number of Pokemon in Sword and Shield because the company decided redo all models from scratch. The wireframes, which are apparently the same across multiple games, are supposed, are supposed to prove that Game Freak's rational is a lie. And it is. But if you look at the actual interview reference in the post, that's not the, what the Pokemon Studio said. And I do recall, and I couldn't find the article, but I think it's here. At the least according to the translation highlights floating around on the internet right now. The actual text of these highlights state that balancing for new Pokemon with new abilities has become very hard. That's a little bull, and it is completely inexcusable, and I don't buy that, okay? And it's a specific reason as to why Game Freak have judged it that it will be hard for all Pokemon to appear, even in titles going forward. 
That's a lie. That is inexcusable. That is bull. Because if you can make previous games to make all Pokemon appear with new species in these said games to have new abilities, surely you can do it with this one. Granted that this con it's it's in a more powerful console. So the fact that they brought up this excuse is inexcusable. It's outright like blasphemy and disrespectful and just I feel like we've all been slapped in the face. The original article shows that the states that the hardware changes impacted the graphics quality of Sword and Shield bull. Cur curiously, Game Freak has said multiple things on the subject, picking one quote as the reason seems suspect. In an interview with Polygram, for example, producer uh, Junichi Masuda says that the studio prioritized adding mechanics over adding more monsters. If you look, game studios, like all the game developer studios out there, if you need more time to develop a game, to develop a product that is essentially like perfected, where it's completed, if you need more time, oh my God, I'm sure we will be more understanding than anything else if you need more time to complete a game. Giving us this bullshit of an excuse, excuse my language and um, YouTube, if you block this, whatever. Um, giving this excuse of like saying that it's hard to do this and decided to choose mechanics over developing more monsters is not worth it. It's, it's inexcusable, first of all. If you need more time, I'm sure the fans who've been devoted to your product for 20 plus years, 10 plus years, five plus years, whatever it, whatever it may be, if you need more time, I'm sure that we would be more than understanding because honestly, I would rather have a complete finished product with quality than have something incomplete and come to find out that we have to spend more money to expand upon these said games just to have more content when we should have had it in the first place. So just going back on your word just shows that you lied and that's very unprofessional, Game Freak. You should not do that. So anyways, moving on. We need to be able to uh, prioritize new gameplay ideas, Masuda said. We need to be able to find a way to balance the right number of Pokemon uh, and also introduce new ways for players to enjoy the game. New gameplay ideas to keep the series fresh and enjoyable far into the future. Likely the decision came down to a combination of factors. So I understand the reasoning behind releasing these expansion packs. There may be good intentions. There may be malintent. I don't know, but I don't see any reason for them to do this for malintent. Um, they really want to keep the series fresh and they really want to expand upon it. I get it, but I don't think the price is justified. Another often cited idea is the Game Freak decreased the number of available Pokemon because it wanted to implement better animations. But once again, if you look at the specific interview containing the information, that's not what the developer says. In the write-up by uh, US Gamer, Masuda does say that creating a game on Nintendo Switch, which is a console, unlike most devices where you can play Pokemon, means higher fidelity and higher quality animations. And again, we've gotten nothing but reused assets from previous games, reused animations, and pretty much a non like an incomplete game product if you play pokemon sword and shield you'll know what i'm talking about honestly i think this game could have looked better i am just slightly i am pretty satisfied with the overall product but there's so much room for improvement when it comes to like environments animations assets monsters abilities more pokemon available basically the entire decks if given enough time and more time I would have been okay with it. I would have been fine waiting. I would have been Nintendo Game Freak. Take my money. Let's go. I want this game. This is the Pokemon game of dreams of my. Uh, of, this is the Pokemon game of my dreams, and I would have been okay with it. But no, we're delivered something that's kind of like that feels a little rushed, and now we're given the opportunity to expand upon it by purchasing the expansion pass for these games, and I think it's just inexcusable, honestly. I'm gonna like grant I'm gonna buy this expansion pass because I really want more Pokemon availability. But I'm gonna like feel pretty reluctant doing that. And it's a shame. I don't wanna feel that way. I think the price should have been either slashed in half to have a value of $30, meaning $14.99 per expansion pass per game, or made it free as a way to, you know, apologize for the inconvenience that was the initial release of the game. So the phrase is immediately followed with, but even more than that, it's coming down to the battle system. We're making sure we can keep everything balanced and give all the Pokemon that appear in the game's chance to shine. Detractors who are upset are called uh, at the uh, cold Pokedex site, above all animations and reused assets, as a smoking gun that proves Game Freak lied. 
and has actually produced a subpar game. But Game Freak hasn't exactly been untruthful. It's been misconstrued as the people pick the parts of the interviews that best suits their points while actively, actively ignoring what developers say that the main reason for the change. But it's much easier to screenshot images or share shoddy animation that, it's asset, uh, that it is to assess the balance of the game's product has been played. Of course, the line of the thinking also ignores the series draw has never been outstanding graphics. So the infamous Famutsu interview. I think this is where we're this is where we're moving on to. Where Masuda mentions Game Freak apparently had to redo models, nonetheless has become a sticking point for fans. Much of it comes to unsourced images hailing from 4chan, where wireframe models of Pokemon appear to show the creatures from Sword and Shield are constructed exactly like the ones from previous games. And it's true because I happen to recognize a lot of the animations in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And that are just basically reconstructed animations and reused assets from previous games. Uh, there was a car horn right there. While Polygon cannot confirm these images are legitimate, we spoke to Pokemon Hacker uh, at Skyers M, who uh, has proven track record with pulling information hidden in the game files, some of which have formed the basis of previous Pokemon leaks. Skyers M says that the hackers do indeed have a way to extract assets. Excuse me. Uh, my alarm went off there. Uh, which have also been due to the same previous games. According to Skyrim's M, the images fans are sharing are real, but he didn't personally extract them, nor can Polygon speak to the people who produced the graphics. So top quality animation, hashtag Game Freak lied. And if we play this... The animations are not all that impressive. I mean, look, look at that. It's just a double kick. It's just a little hop. Um, honestly... A lot could have been done with this game, given the fact that this is a first-time conventional Pokemon being... Uh, this is the first time for, for a conventional Pokemon game franchise to be released on a console. And a lot more could have been done with this, honestly. A lot more new animations could have been implemented. Uh, of course, the entire Dex could have been available. Uh, the game could have... They could have taken more time to create more lush environments. They could have taken the time to create, uh, to have better graphics on the on this game, and I think I've proven myself already. Um, my overall standpoint on these expansion passes, uh, I don't think the price is justifiable. I am going to be purchasing these expansion passes for the games, but I will reluctantly do it. So, and if you want to get the expansion pass and expand upon the availability of the Pokemon in the games, by all means, do it. Uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to, by the way, because there is another method. And the good news is that there is another method to bring these Pokemon over if you don't have the expansion pass. And it says here that players can newly uh, can get newly available Pokemon through features li like Link Trades or Pokemon uh, Home, which will be a monthly paid subscription that you can get, uh, which will be available February. I don't know how much the cost is, but it just it really boggles me how far and you know how times have changed as far as having instant gratification, having availability to things, uh, where Pokemon is now getting into, Game Freak, I should say, is getting to the cloud services where you can pay a monthly fee to get these things. And it's it's a little absurd, but like everybody's just digging into a piece of the pie, a piece of the, the cloud pie, really. Um, everybody wants a paid subscription, and it just boggles my mind. I mean, this is not the Game Freak that I know. And Game Freak usually made things available from the initial uh, release of Pokemon games. Um, but, yeah, if you disagree with the expansion pass, I mean, you can always, again, you can always respond with your wallets. And that's just not to spend any money on these expansion pass because there is another option. You can um, trade with a friend who does have the expansion pass, who does have those extra 200-plus Pokemon available in the national decks, and you can train them over to your game if you don't have the expansion pass. So I'm going to get it for a couple of reasons. I really want to explore and I really want to play this game even more. And I want to catch more Pokemon. And I want to explore these new regions. Essentially, we're getting new games half off if you really think about it. But that's my overall standpoint. I know this video kind of dragged on a little bit too long. Um, and I hope you guys can understand where I'm coming from. And um, yeah, if you decide to buy the expansion pass, good for you. If you don't, great for you as well. Um, but overall, I just have mixed feelings about this, and um, I really hope Game Freak can make better decisions, um, maybe think twice before they release their next generation of Pokemon games, uh, and just learn from this, because this has, met with, this has been met with mixed feelings and controversy, and it's pretty much been a whole mess from there. 
So anyways, guys, that's my overall standpoint, my opinion on this, and I hope you guys uh, learn something from it. Anyways, guys, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click on bell notifications so you all don't miss anything. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.